Hello guys. I had an entire recording that I thought was going, but I'd never pressed the record button. So here I am now. I'm going to review uh, profit limit hit trades. I'm going to show you the ICT models that we used um, one by one. So first, let's start with the first model that I used to say that this was going to do what it did. And that is the market maker sell model. Oh, by the way, top step below uh, and read all your disclaimers, please. Not financial advice um, and not legal services solicitation. I'm not advertising. Okay, so let's get through all the six models that I used that said that this was going to happen. Um, I'm going to show you the executions. So overnight, during the London session, um, I got short. Uh, I got short here, and I got short here. So I was in drawdown for most of the overnight session. Um, but anyways, I got short. I got short many hours ago, and then I went to sleep. So okay. Um, all right, let's hide the executions. So you could see that I covered uh, there, and that was a mistake. So, okay, uh, let's go market maker sell model. So, the market maker sell model is that. Remember that the 24-hour banking cycle begins with New York Open Midnight, uh, which was here. That was that price. I'm going to ignore all the time distortion there that I think that is time distortion. I'm going to just talk about this first high. So you can see that when price went above the New York Open uh, Midnight Open price, which is basically like the new 24-hour candle. Well, actually, we'll use that one. See the price when, when it goes back over the New York midnight open? Do you see how right there, how it can hardly get above it? That's a very good sign that you're going to have a, you are going to have uh, a pretty dramatic sell off. That's the market maker sell, uh, sell model right there. So do I fully understand it? No, but I know that when price is basically having a difficult time staying above the New York midnight open, um, because remember, in reality, you know, the 24-hour day does not start with Wellington. It starts with New York. So you have to imagine that your daily candle starts right here. That's your daily candle where it starts. So when price has a difficult time uh, moving far above the New York Open Midnight price, which you can see that it did, um, that's that's a part of that's like the key part of the market maker sell model okay London silver bullet um, between the hours of 0300 and 0400 price should form a displacement a fair value gap that you can enter in on and then aim for liquidity there it was right there now Usually you don't hold these things for hours and hours and hours, but if you've got other models saying that, you know, this thing should reprice lower, then you can. So with that being said, um, there was your London silver bullet entry. And I'll show you the executions. That was my second entry right there. Did you see? I entered it on the first time because I had a lot of things that telling were telling me that price would want to go low. So this is my second entry. That's a London silver bullet entry. Okay, so that's the second model was a London silver bullet, a displacement that forms before or during 0300 to 0400 fair value gap that you can trade into. Uh, breaker block with standard deviations. So let's get up to our higher time frame breaker, and that's going to be. Uh, I'll show that to you. So it's going to be high, 
that's going to be low, and that's going to be higher high that pushes into liquidity. It's very important. It needs to push into liquidity in order to be a good breaker. So you see how you see how price here pushes above all these highs and it pushes that rejection block. So it's running on liquidity. Obviously, it also run it ran over internal liquidity there. That's a good sign. One standard deviation lower would take us to 118 spot 50. So that was a good sign that price was going to do this. Now I want to talk about the fifth model that showed that price was going to do this, and that is the regular trading hours gap. So uh, fifth model is regular trading hours gap. Let's get down on a 15 minute chart and you can see that between Thursday the 29th of June uh, New York PM close and then Friday the 30th of June New York AM open there is a large gap and price uh, if, it, if it wants to be efficient and if it wants to be fair needs to cut through these gaps okay because really this is what the chart looks like right only the New York sessions so there's a gaping hole in the chart on the regular trading hours so price should want to come in and fill that back in. That's the regular trading hours gap basically. It could, you know, you can also you just use the gap for the 50% of it is a good spot. So let's see if that yeah, do you see how price on that regular trading hours gap we're still the market hasn't opened. Do you see how we got that reaction off the 50%? It probably does not want to fill in the full regular trading hours gap all the way down here. Uh, in the pre-market. It probably wants to wait to do that for regular trading hours. So probably going lower still. We're probably looking at like 2 to 3% down today. Uh, yeah. I think I think it's going to just sell off today pretty, pretty badly. Um, and the New York AM uh, repricing macro is that basically when price has an objective that it needs to get to uh, it's going to make the bulk of that. It's going to reprice during this hour, the hour prior to the stock market opening. That's this right here. That's not movement. That's repricing. Does that make sense? It's not movement and not in the way that you think. It's it's just repricing. Okay. It's, it's trying to achieve a fair and efficient price before the stock market opens. So it's not movement, it's repricing. Okay. And then time distortion. So he hasn't talked about this, like he hasn't come out publicly with the model. But whenever he has talked about, about time distortion, uh, it looks like this. It looks like just going a whole lot of nowhere, drifting, um, before the market does what you expect it to do or your analysis suggests that it should do. So what ICT has not ever taught, ICT has not yet taught time distortion. However, when he's mentioned it before, it looks like the pink box just you know going a whole lot of nowhere before making the move that that was already baked into the cake so that's what that looks like so that's six models one of which he hasn't really taught yet that told me that the market was going to aggressively reprice lower which it did and I don't think that the market is done um, I think that the NASDAQ has got Thursday's trading is going to be quite um, I think we're looking at Thursday's trading coming maybe second standard deviation uh, if it wants to get really nasty okay we're looking where the market has been inefficient number one obviously I think 11850 is in the cards uh, for today that's that's that regular trading hours gap now, if it wants to get really nasty today, got a busy down here as part of our balance price range. It also would be that breaker block second standard deviation, and that would take us way down. So that might be in the cards for Thursday's trading. 
uh, way lower. Um, I think reasonably we're definitely seeing 118. We're at 196 right now, and I think I think 118 is pretty in the cards right now. So, all right. I've reached my profit limit on my top step, step two. We caught a, re, a New York AM repricing lower. Um, there was some news, and obviously, you know, none of this is real, in my opinion, in my opinion, in, in my opinion. So it's all just computerized. It was going to do that anyways. Um, so uh, that is that. Lord willing, um, Friday I can uh, hit another $3,600, and then Monday $1,800. All right, bye. Top step, affiliate, below.